my class, um, <clears throat> I thought today I'd go, kind of place the um, D-pen D catalyzed reaction of warfarin in the overall synthesis of warfarin for the whole class, because every part of the class did at least part of this. <clears throat> but I'm specifically going to go over the mechanism of the D-pen catalyzed synthesis of warfarin because we don't have time for it in class. In class this week, we're going to be going over how to write a paper, okay? So um, in terms of the total synthesis of warfarin, the people who are working on the project, okay, just to give you an idea about what they're doing, is they took different types of aldehydes that varied over here. And we're going to continue this project, although we had some problems with it. They kind of varied over here and over here. So there were different groups here. And they reacted them with acetaldehyde, I'm sorry, with, with this acetone in the presence of KOH. And in doing so, they did aldol reactions, some of which that worked and some of which didn't work. It was very experimental. And they made this compound, again, where there were different R groups on here, or you know, in the most simplest sense, the compound would be the compound that's used in warfarin, okay, um, which is, again, I've mentioned this compound many, many times, but this is 4-phenyl-3-butene-2-ohm, okay, so that's what's in warfarin, what's used in the warfarin synthesis, but they were actually making different um, alpha-beta unsaturated ketones for their warfarin synthesis, okay. But they also, and that was fairly successful in that we made several compounds. All right, what's the point behind this is that the slight structural changes might result in slight differences in biological activity. Um, the other thing they were doing is that, and this is the part where we've, we've had some trouble, we're kind of fishing this, trying to fish this compound out right now, is they took this compound, um, which is orthohydroxyacetophenone, and very hard reaction, they reacted this with sodium hydride in the presence of diethyl carbonate. And we're still not sure what happened with this because we got an oil out instead of a solid. But we're going to look at it this week. Okay. Um, they got this compound, which has a, a tautomeric form, which looks like this. And from class, you can all benefit from looking at this because you've all worked with this compound. So they actually made or try, attempted to make 4 hydroxy coumarin. Okay, so this is, these are just tautomers. That they're the wrong arrows. These are tautomers. Okay. Um, so they, they attempted that last week. It was a very hard, arduous reaction. We were supposed to get a solid at this point. We didn't get a solid, we got an oil, so we're going to analyze that this week to see what we've got. And then what everybody has done is the last step. And the last step is taking 4-hydroxy um, coumarin. We talked about this before, so I want it to come full circle. And you know, if you didn't finish this, why not finish it? Most people have some time, they can finish this reaction. It doesn't take too long. A few people finished it and got good results. In the presence of some aldehyde, now again, for the people who are in the, the other section, in the B section or the Thursday section, they know that some, their aldehydes are not all exactly the same. And that's what I refer to when I say a derivative. But this is, these are the actual components of warfarin. And what everybody did as kind of a pra practice reaction is they took DPEN, the DPEN catalyst, and I started talking about this a little bit a couple weeks ago, in the presence of THF and in the pres presence of acetic acid. And we've already proven that this has work worked in a couple of cases. So this works pretty well. And so what I told you was that this process involves several steps. And the first step, which I was starting to get you to work on a little bit, was how the aldehyde and the DPEN catalyst get together to catalyze the reaction. Um, and by the way, if, even if you're in the group um, that had trouble making this, we will still try to do some couplings of your compounds, okay? Even if we have to use store-bought or 
some other material that I've made. Okay? Um, but regardless, um, this DPEG catalyst enables these to get together to make warfarin. Okay, what does warfarin look like? Um, warfarin looks like this. That's when I get all my stereo centers in. that okay and if um, you use if you use and again this could be in a different uh, tautomeric form but if you use um, the R R D pen you get I'm just trying to pick which is the highest priority so you get the R Sorry, you get the R uh, warfarin. This is one. Let me check that. That's four. That's all carbons. This has an H on it. So that's our priority. So it's one, two, three. So it looks R if it's out, so it's really S, so it should be going back. So you should get the R compound if you use RRD pen. And if you use SSD pen, you get the S stereoisomer there. Okay, so this should give single stereoisomer. And the reaction, this particular reaction has been working very well. Now, how it'll work when we put other groups on, that's another question. Okay, so, um, but like I said, the, the Thursday group's going to try to clean this up a little bit to see if they've, they've, got, they've got some in there. All right, now, um, what's the mechanism? Well, as I told you, the first part of the mechanism for the last step the first part of that mechanism is the formation of a shift base. So what happens is whatever your compound might be, and again, it might be substituted, so we hope it'll still form the shift base, this compound reacts with the amino group from the DPEN catalyst from one, one of the amino groups from the DPEN catalyst. And I don't have it in its stereochemical form right now, but I will. I'm going to try to simplify this a little bit. It reacts with that to form a shift base. Now, what will that look like? That would look like this. You guys learned this reaction in class and should be able to write a mechanism for it. But because of the conditions of the reaction, which are acidic, the reaction's done in acetic acid. Can you see this, Mark? still has a phenyl on it. Um, because of the, um, this is wrong. I apologize. Because of the, um, I have it kind of going the wrong way here. This is plus. This has the methyl on it. Um, this has a phenyl on it. This has a phenyl on it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the D pen on there. Because it is in acidic conditions, this actually sits protonated. Now, this is going to happen twice. It's not going to happen just one time. Okay, so what happens is this nitrogen, let's start the mechanism, in an imine formation or a shift base, the nitrogen comes in, acts like a nucleophile, attacks the carbonyl, and opens the pi bond like that. Okay? And I, I told you guys to write that general mechanism in class a couple weeks ago. Okay, then what happens? Sorry about my little microstructure there. Then I'm going to start abbreviating these phenyls because these, these structures become very cumbersome. Then I've got an O minus NH2 hooked to this chain, NH2. I have not put the stereochemistry in yet. Phenyl, phenyl, like that. And there's hydrogens there as well. Right now, this has a plus charge. What should happen at this juncture is there's a proton exchange. That means these proton will exchange from this site to this site. Okay, this is just due to solvent. 
Again, the solvent we're sitting in for this reaction is THF and acetic acid. So there's plenty of proton source. Okay? So this will do, do its proton exchange. That isn't that big a deal. This should be commonplace for you at this stage of the game, having done, um, you know, lots of reactions in class and seen lots and lots of mechanisms. All right, that's the rest of the, the deep end catalyst. And again, it's going to do the same thing on the other side, so I'm just going to quickly whip to that at the end. Okay, then what happens? In um, the formation of a shift phase, what you ultimately get is the loss of water across this bond here. So I'm going to use the acid, the acetic acid, which I have in this mixture, and I'm going to protonate, and it is an acidic mixture. The pH is set kind of just enough so that the proton doesn't really get involved in the beginning, but it gets involved in this middle step. This is the rate determining step, is the loss of water. So this becomes a water molecule. These are occur in sort of a peculiar way. Okay, the water is lost. Okay, I actually write this in a two-step process because I believe in resonance, I mean, and I believe in drawing resonance forms. And I think if you just if you do it like an elimination, an E2 elimination, you still have to draw the resonance forms. So I get a plus charge there. The nitrogen is right next to this. This is what I call one bond resonance. Okay, this lone pair is going to be shared with that lone pair making a conjugated system, which you can see there, but that's the shift base. Um, under the conditions of the reaction where it's acidic, that stays protonated. And I believe in the paper, um, they have the, warf, the, the shift base drawn as a protonated species. So at this juncture, I would have, and you should try this, like try writing it out on a more complicated structure. It's good practice for you. So this, at this juncture, would be double bonded to a nitrogen with an H. Okay, and then this nitrogen is hooked into the rest of the um, D-pen catalyst. The thing is, though, it, it reacts with two of these. And again, for the Thursday groups, these groups could be different that are hooked on here, okay? So this happens twice. So what happens when it happens twice? Well, the D-pen catalyst, if... I just got a low battery warning, 10%. 10 okay, let me just see if I can go a little further. So I'm not going to be able to finish it. Right. We're going to have to plug it in. So, um, all right, we're going to stop right there, and then I'll plug it in.